welcome to The Swift Half, your weekly session of chat from the UK OCR and adventure running scene. Each week, pub landlord Alan and our favourite regular Ian discuss races, runners and anything else that comes to mind. So pull up a pew, pour yourself a drink and join us for The Swift Half. You're listening to the seventh most popular podcast for people who understand that life is one long malapur prism. Ian, my friend, welcome to the pub. Welcome to the Swift Half again. How are you? I'm good, Alan. I got back from Bonnie, Scotland in one piece. You you mean they actually let you out of um, Scotland without, like, tarring and feathering you? Yeah, somehow I managed to avoid it. No, people in Scotland are lovely. They really are. Now, if you're other way, you know, if they'd have come down to Lancashire, I don't know. They've been pushed back up. Do they still have the red coats on Adrian's wall there, stopping them com- coming down? I don't think so, particularly not in Blackpool, because I think half of Blackpool's from Glasgow. <laughs> I lived in Eastbourne once, and Eastbourne was for Gla- Glaswegians. Liverpudlians and Glaswegians. So who on earth was I talking to then? If all the Glaswegians are in Blackpool and Eastbourne. Down, yeah, down, down near where you were, who was in Glasgow? They were just other people from like other parts of Scotland, but they all sound the same as Glaswegians. Yeah, Graham, you're going to have to tell us. We obviously we've got Graham, who's our native Glaswegian. He he can tell us um, who actually lives in Glasgow now for Rolling Blackpool. <laughs> yeah, in the Blackpool Eastbourne or anyone else who lives up there. I think they just move around the country. They just they just keep moving around. Um, before we get into a whole Scottish thing now, you know, and we're going to get cancelled here, let's talk about what are you drinking this week? What meal deal special? Because I'm only joining this podcast to find the meal deal specials. Well, today it was a meal deal actually from Marks and Spencer's while we're up in in Glasgow. Before I tell you what I'm drinking, I'm going to tell you this. The Marks and Spencer's in Glasgow is amazing. The food that it's got there. I've never seen this before. They they have like a counter with freshly made wraps and wedges and lots and lots of, of food that is a lot better than going into Tesco's and just going into a fridge and grabbing a pre-packed sandwich. It, it, it was cool. And I got a bit of a meal deal there, which included a juicy fruit or juicy water, actually, uh, raspberries and black currants with other fruits, apparently, which I don't know what other fruits there are. I got a meal deal this week from Greg's Bakery, um, and I only got it because it was £3.75 for the meal deal, but the sandwich I got was £3.65. So I was paying 10 pence more, and I got a an, an innocent smoothie, I think it was, some green stuff anyway, that should have been like nearly two quid. So I was like... Well, I'm quids in now, aren't I? One pound ninety in. Oh, no, please tell me you went on eBay to sell it and made a profit. <laughs> no, that would have been good. That would have been good. I'm actually um, talking about that. I was talking to someone yesterday about the new Innovate Mud Talons, and there are people buying the Innovate Mud Talons, and there will be even more people getting up early this weekend to buy the new Nike vapor flies because they go and the new version going to sell this weekend, so they can just store them and then sell them in a several months' time when they go out of you know when there's no stock left of them. So they're creating an artificial scarcity in order to profit later, yeah. Yeah, apparently it's massive on the Nike side of things. Um, but Jamie was telling me this, but Jamie was telling me this, he's like he's in these groups, I can't think what they call it now, but it's, it's like a shoe selling site because he loves his trainers, Jamie does. Um, and they're all talking about it, you know. Um, who wants a pair of Nike vapor flies currently 330 quid will be 400 pounds a week after? Wow, that I don't know about that. It's almost like a ticket master for trainers, isn't it? It just it just doesn't sit right to me. Whether everyone's going to do it with these new innovates that are out, I don't think they've probably got the, the right remit, but it'd be interesting because I know when Innovate brought out. The latest G three hundreds they sold out really, really quickly in this certain colour. So it'd be interesting to see if there are people out there that decide that they're going to buy as much stock as possible. Um, I kind of wish that they didn't, or they found some ways to avoid it because it's just scalping, isn't it? They're, yeah. they're not actually adding anything to the transaction. 
they're just buying it and then selling it. Or I guess technically that's what Tesco does, but uh, I, I don't fancy negotiating my milk uh, with the local farmer or my bread with the local baker, et cetera, to, to be delivered to me. So Tesco, you are kind of paying for, for the experience of them putting it all together and you can get it as convenient as possible. Whereas this, they're not selling you a pair of Innovates and the socks and a new dry rod. They're selling you some that you should be able to buy from the shops. Yeah, yeah. And people used to do it with um, Rat Race Day Weekend tickets. There's a there was a guy in Sheffield that I knew quite well. I still do know quite well. Um, and he used to buy five and six Rat Race Dirty Weekend tickets. And then you would see, like, you know, a month before, wave one, I've got a Rat Race Dirty Weekend ticket if anyone wants it. Um, oh, big God. gamble, but, yeah. Um, do you reckon we'll get like that in High Rocks? I think you will, yeah. I really think IROX will get to a point where people are going to be buying tickets, so they know they don't do a, a tier at the minute, though, do they? They don't. They don't do a tier as in like it's hundred pound here, but then if you buy later, it's hundred and fifty or two hundred. So I think it's more of a gamble in IROX, where if you look at the way OCR is marketed, it was always cheaper to buy early, and then the price went up as you got nearer to the event. So regarding Rat Race Day weekend tickets, I think they used to be about. Eighty pound when they first came out, but then when it got to like a month before, they were like hundred and eighty pound. And then so if you paid eighty, you could sell them for still market value at hundred and eighty, or you could even sell them at hundred and fifty. But because you were selling wave one, they were probably worth more than hundred eighty pound because no one had got wave one. Well, that makes sense. I think high rocks do have kind of tiering. It's more surge for so i think the first five thousand tickets go at a certain price or first thousand go at a certain price and it just goes up but they they never say oh it's gonna there's a price rise in coming i think it just happens uh we have gone off uh the boil a little bit so alan what are you drinking um well i'm on the still on the freedom zero alcohol and i'm quite loving this you know and it's a beer, like I say, it's um from Malta. It's it's perfect. I'm yeah, I'm excited. I'm still drinking it. Still got cases left. I think I might go and get a couple more cases this weekend, see if they've got any any more left because it's good. And I'm still losing the weight side of things. I am losing the weight side of things still. Good. I need to get back on to the weight loss journey. I think I've kind of stabilized, but yeah, I need to drop a little bit more if I if I can. I'm not doing as much fasting as I, I did previously and eating a little bit too much sugar again, but I'm on it, Alan. You know, this time next year, I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, wrong quote. <laughs> wrong quote. Uh, but Alan, are you not super excited that the second OCR of the year took, uh, took place this past weekend? And well, before we talk about it, should we explain why it's the second? Because, well, we thought it was the first OCR of the year, year last week. Um, yeah, so we want to apologise, don't we? And we're going to apologise to Winter McTuff because Winter McTuff was the first OCR. How did we forget it? And, and we got some stick for it. We got some stick for it. We deserve a stick for it. I, I can't believe we forgot it, especially because we spent quite a bit of um, our January episodes talking about it. <laughs> I know. Um, because... Things happen so quickly, and you know what? OCR is changing so quick. Um, and yeah, I, I'd completely forgot. It felt like it was last year for some reason. So yeah, I'm gutted. Sorry, McTuff. Sorry, Dean. Apologies. Please accept him. But Nuts was the second OCR of the season this <laughs> last weekend. Well, now we've said that, you know someone's going to point out, I, I don't know, but the Flying Dent Ultra Color Run triple obstacle bash happened uh, in February or something like that. So if something did happen between McTuff and Knotts, let us know. But in the meantime, let's talk about Knotts. It looked like a lot of fun based on some of the social medias that I've seen. It looked very muddy, Alan. It looked super muddy. And if anyone listened to um, Pint Size OCR that came out on Monday, we had Finn Liu won the men's and Libya was second in the females. Um, on there and both of them said how, how muddy it was how taxing it was um, so yeah it, it was super taxing and I was hoping to go through the results today Ian 
But there was on this morning, but now they've been taken back down. And I don't know why, <laughs> as we're recording this, because I wanted to mention how many did not finish as was on there, you know, or didn't qualify because didn't do them in time. There were so many DNFs on the sprint lap. So the 7K people were pulling out. Oh, wow. I saw a few had DNQ next to it, which means they didn't win, so they didn't qualify. But, yeah, I had, I had no idea that so many people were, were struggling. Uh, but it did look cold. Yeah, It looked like it was raining at point, points of it, Alan, and that, that water didn't look fun. No, it, it didn't look... I, I love nuts in terms of... I think it's raw, it's muds like very clayy. It's it's an it's an amazing it's an amazing course to run. Bit good to when I went down last time because they'd taken out what I thought was one of the best parts, which was the the army style assault course where you went through tires, crawling into mud, and they've changed all of that. I haven't been down well, I have been down since they've changed it, but I haven't run it since they've changed it. And so I was a bit good about that. But now they're doing a lot more rigs and things like that. But Winter, down there, freezing cold, hands, you know, the grip, um, it's going to take its toll on people. Was it the toughest obstacle course out there? Some people said it was, some people said it wasn't. I think now, in the middle of winter, if you went down there this time, the conditions would have would have made it potentially the toughest obstacle course that we, we might see this year. I'd be minded to agree. It's such a shame that due to various reasons. It was only a one or two lap of this time. You didn't have the the full lap, which, as we all know, is arguably the toughest um, OCR that you can do in the UK. You know that tough guys uh, RIP, or I believe it's RIP. Uh, I've not checked my inbox. There might be something <laughs> in there. Uh, talk, talking about donkeys and something, something else. Uh, but, yeah, it's a shame that there wasn't, hopefully... We'll see as OCR gets reinvigorated. We'll see the four lapper again. And can you imagine a four lapper with fifty plus people like there used to be? Oh, absolutely amazing! It would be great to see that. It'd be great to see that. I um, was searching the internet today, and I'm going to jump down the notes here because I put a note on real late on. Um, I found an old calendar of all events that were in. I think it's from about 2015, 2016. Can I name a few that were in winter? Come on. We had this discussion last week, didn't we? We did, and we, we couldn't name all, but I'm, I'm going to name all the ones that were there, but this is all, they're not all there around anymore. So January, we had Tough Guy. February, so I've done Tough Guy. February, we had Avalanche Run and Brutal 10. Yeah, that was in February. Avalanche Run was crazy. March, Paris 10, Back to the Trenches, Brutal 10, NX Runner, and Nuclear Blackout. So you, you actually had like quite a few events in, in January, February, March. And this is um, pre-Ram Run, pre-Airfield Anarchy, you know. So, I mean, that's absolutely amazing. Shall I name really? some of the ones that are no longer here yes. for the year? Yeah, go on then. For the whole year. Shout -outs? So, uh, Pain Barrier. Now, I don't know if Yorkshire Warrior's still there because their website's down at the moment, but Yorkshire Warrior. Extreme Storm, Farmyard Frolics, Warrior Run, um, Warrior Adrenaline Race, um, the Garolkeed Marches, X Runner. There's whole log, but we know they're still going. The Great Escape Challenge, Beat the Bog, um, Rat Race Dirty Weekend, Zombie Run, Chilton Warrior, Advent Adventure Races Essex, Kamikaze, Hell on the Arbor Side. And um, that was up in Cumbria, not too far from where you are. Um, X Mud, um, AGR Black Rock Five. Alliance Trust Catarin Yom, Commando Challenge, Day of the Reckoning. Um, where are we? Said X Mudanta. Beach Bash, Commando Shuffle, Major Series, which was a big one at one point. You know, all these, I've done quite a lot of these and can't believe them all. Um, the the Commando Shuffle. Yeah, the Commando Shuffle, which was in on Dartmoor. It was a 30 miler. So, okay, carry, carry on. Yeah. Twilight Adventure Run. Um, we've mentioned Beat the Bog, mentioned Kamikaze, some other thing. Um, Bog Commander's on here, so that's still going. Um, Gibr Gibraltar Rock Run, whatever that, whatever that is. Never heard of that. Oh, Gurkha Challenge. That was on Selsby Plain. That was quite good. Um, where else have we got? 
Men's Health Survival of Fitness, No Ego Challenges, JCB Mud Run, Warrior oh, Dash. That one. Yeah. All of those no JCB. longer with us. It made me so rem so emotional not knowing they weren't with us anymore. It really is. And what's interesting is no, we're seeing it in the High Rocks community, but lots of people are setting up gym based events. Yeah. And it's almost exactly the same. And no doubt in a, a few years, we'll be reading a similar list of events which are sadly no longer with us. So, but there's definitely a gold rush in, uh, in fitness racing at the moment. Definitely. Definitely. How many events can you name now that, have, that are still going? Can you name many? So how many yeah, events let... now that can you name? I know you know you're going to mention like um, McTuff because we've just mentioned it. But what about some of the other events? Tough guy, tough mudder, Spartan. What else? So obviously you got nuclear and nuts, which we yeah. we mentioned. Bob Commander, we've already mentioned. Um, Total Warrior, as well. Uh, we've got Tower Warrior on top of that. Yeah. What's the one up in Cumbria? I can never remember it, its name. It, it's not Badass Mucker, it's the other one, isn't it? What's so the Cumbrian Both Badass one? and the Celtic Warrior, they're still going, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Could Colonel Killer, is that one? Colonel Killer, yeah. There's one for you, yeah. So Colonel Killer. What about the one we featured last year uh, that was happening not a million miles away from uh, Shell Carney, um, the one in Lincoln, but you went? Diablo Challenge. Yeah, is that still going? No dates this year as of yet. No dates this year. Also, our good friends down in the Southwest and the UK OCR series, whose names I'm tipping my tongue. Rude Rampage. Rude Rampage, yep. So we've got those as well. What's one in Aberdeen? Tartan Warrior? No, no. But one that was on the UK OCR series for two years. Oh, um, Beach Ballistic? Beach Ballistic, that's still going, I presume? Yes. What else is left? Have I missed some? Couple. Um, Total Warrior. Can't believe you missed Total Warrior. <laughs> I said Total Warrior. Oh, did you say Total Warrior? I thought I, you said Tartan I said, Warrior. I said Total and then I said Tartan. Oh, okay. My fault. Wolf Run? Oh, yeah. For some strange reason, I always think... I guess if I had one Wolf Run, I'd remember it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, if you won, yeah. you're you not going to remember it because you're, ne you're never going to win. No, you know, we've never had a guest on yet that's won a Wolf Run. I'd, oh, we have um, James, haven't we? So, um, but yeah, we never talk about it when they're on. I just realised one that you're probably really mad at me because I I actually forgot the race that shan't be mentioned. <laughs> oh, well, you're quite right. In fact, I've not really got it on my list, which is a funny <laughs> one. Um, there's the Commando um, run, Holog Events, um, Forest Warrior, which was quite recently, Born Survivor, uh, British Champs. We've got British Champs. Um, I think you might have mentioned that one. Adrenaline Shock in, in, is still going, which is in Richmond. Is that one in Leeds, which is at the Krypton Factor... Obstacle course, but not the Krypton Factor obstacle course. It's the remake one. It's a bit like saying you go into the home of gladiators and you turn up in Sheffield and not um, the Birmingham National Indoor Arena. That's the one. <laughs> um, I think we've, we think we've got them all. We've probably missed some. Uh, but, listener, you know, we need you on this, guys. If we've missed any, reach out to us. Let us know. We, we want to know all the events that's out there. Um, Mud Monsters coming back, by the way. I don't know if you men mentioned Mud Monsters, but they're coming back. Um, I think I've got all my list. I think you've, you've got most of my list out there. So, but it's strange how, but a lot of these weren't even on that list. You know, your nuclear wars, your nuts, and that um, that I mentioned earlier on. But we back in 2015. It's so it's changed a little bit, hasn't it? You know what I mean? It's and we've had others that have come and gone in between. Ah, so we've also not mentioned some of the time trial venues as well, which are. OCRs in Rome right now. So you, you've got the various ones um, there as well. So it might be worth us doing a separate list of all of them. Maybe for next week, Alan? I think that's a that's a cracking idea. I think, we, yeah, reach out to us. We'll, we'll try and find all, all of them for next week. But someone reach out to us. To let us know. I know our pub group will let us know. I know they always let us know. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, while we're talking about venues and that, the Scottish series have announced some new races in their series. So, as we know, we've had McTuff, um, March 23rd, um, Tartan Warrior 3K, 
March 24th, Tartan Warrior 8K. Um, obviously, that weekend as well, you've got the UK OCR series at Tartan Warrior. The ones I've announced recently is June the 1st, Fit Body Farm Summer OCR, and June the 15th, Tough Mudder Infinity Scotland. So you need to race the specified competitive wave in each race, and any athlete top three races will count. So we've got um, five races now, one, two, three, four, five races, and your top three will count. Interesting. Very interesting, and it's good that we have a Scottish series as well. It's just something else people can aim for, particularly our friends up in, in Scotland, because as I was travelling up there this weekend, I realised how much space there is between like Manchester and Glasgow. There is a lot of space in between, so them having like five races which they can aim for, yeah, it'd be great if there was 25 races up there, but at least having both five and maybe one or two others gives them a bit of a season. It does. I think, it's, I think it's, it's great that they've got it up there. Um, and there, a lot of them travel down to England. You know, it's they're all over the place, um, travelling up and down. I think Karen McQuarrie, McQuarrie was down for nuts this weekend, which I'm going to look for the results because I did actually share the results, Ian. So, yeah, so Karen was first, Libby second, and Louise Ferryman was third. Um in the men as well, um, as I mentioned, Finley Greenleaf won it, Jason Morland second, Dave Peters. Finley Green Greenleaf winning his first adult um OCR that I'm aware of. So um great result. But no, it's great that up in Scotland they have got all them and because they come down here to race in our our series and everything else, it'd be great if some people went up there to race in theirs as well. Right, exactly. Really would be good to see a bit of a contingent from from down here. Kate Stilwell did a few last year, didn't she? She was actually winning, I think, after two events. Yeah, she she was. Uh, and well, she's a great racer, isn't she? Phenomenal racer. Phenomenal racer. And she didn't do as many races later on in the year as what she she did early, though. So I'd like to see her come back and see and compete against everyone else because she wasn't... An, she, well, she is an amazing athlete, so, yeah. Right, exactly. And I travelled to Scotland this past weekend. I know you did, and um, I do believe that you have brought a guest in with you to talk about what you got up to up there. Did you want to bring him in? Jen, how are you? Our intern. Hello, I'm well. How are you? I'm very good. I understand that you um, carried my doubles partner around Hyrax, Manchester, this last weekend. No, I think he carried me around in all honesty for once. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm like, I'm enjoying this. Before we get into it, though, are you drinking with us tonight? No, I am. I'm being very boring on fizzy water. You're on the same fizzy water that Ian was on from up in Scotland? Well, just Tesco Scottish sparkling water. <laughs> so that's it. Not as good. Not as good. So so yeah. tell us, High Rocks, Scotland, this is not your first trip. What was the course like up there? Oh, yeah, I went to Glasgow car. It's probably like by far, by far my favourite. For what reason? Because of all like the twists and turns and things. <laughs> I just think it's great. It's good fun because you just go wee around. <laughs> Basically, it's just like fun for me to have not just like straight, 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 you know, and going around a few corners. There's more corners there. Great fun. A little bit squiggly it looked on, on the map. What? Yes, it was different <laughs> from the year before. So the wrong car. Yeah. So um as in like was it that little leg at the bottom? Because it, it was like a milk bottle last year, upside down milk bottle, but it looked more like it was a little bit more of an extra turn at the end now. Yes, there was and the wall balls were in a different room. Um so they extended it a bit. So I think that's why you had the extra squiggly bit on it. Um, but I did find it, found it so much fun. Wait, so, so the wall balls were in a different room to the rest of the event? Yeah. So you did the event, you finished, you went to a time, and then you walked to another building and did the wall balls in a whole different room? Yeah, so it was still off the running track, um, but it was further up from where it was last year, and it was off in its own little room where they put, like, some of the stalls and things like that, and the um, so yeah, um, so yeah, they kind of extended into another room for the wall balls, which was quite good because it meant 
people got a really good view of all of it. Cool. And did Ian do his first, Ian, did you do your first share of wall balls this time? I did actually. It wasn't wasn't too bad. Uh the judging this time was very strict, which is what we want to see, to be fair. We want it to be the standard, which is the standard, because wall balls, you don't really want to see people getting away with bad squats or missing the target, do you, Alan? Well, <laughs> you're going to get bad squats from me, I guess. You miss the target out of the bad squats. That's true, yeah. Yeah, what, what we should have done is I should have done the squats, pass you the ball and let you aim it. <laughs> hey, that would be good, that, actually. I reckon that would be a good a good plan. Yeah, I don't think we can do that, but it would be a good plan. <laughs> So what 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 did he how did he carry you, Jen? Tell me how he carried you. Well, for one, I was a full of a cold. I had an Achilles tendon issue. Um, and basically, yeah, I couldn't run properly. Um he was probably like getting me to run like a bit faster at points, which is good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's a good thing. Um, but sometimes I just had to slow down. And he did do a lot of the lifting and shifting because of my uh, ankle as well and i think he probably did more lunges than i ever did no way <laughs> no yeah he probably did more than i do and that's normally like one of my fortes and along with the sledge he probably did more of that pull and push as well for me yeah, but, yeah. gentlemen i'll try my best but i Apparently, Alan, the best way to train for an open event is to do a pro and everything feels lighter. <laughs> that's about right, actually. I, I, that's why I can't go back to it. And I've got to, I'm always going to stay at pro and no, no other ways. But was it a big difference that taking a step back down? You know, you, you joked about it then, but was it the, a big difference? Some aspects, yeah. The sleds. Mm. Maybe not so much. I couldn't really notice much difference between the sleds because they they vary from place to place. The kettlebells was a noticeable difference. The kettlebells felt like they were balloons when I picked them up. I, I did. I, I grabbed them and it, it was. It just felt really weird. The wall ball again. That felt lighter. I know it's only three kilograms difference, but. It felt so much lighter and so much easier to catch, Alan. Mm, yeah, it, it, it's slightly. You think that it's because it's slightly smaller. Because when you put that, the ones the pro use and the the normal weights next to each other, you can you can see a physic. Uh, there's a, a visible distance in size on the balls. Maybe, yeah, maybe that that's it. I do find the Hyrox balls are slightly bigger generally than a regular wall ball that you find in the gym. I think it's this because the weight is then distributed over a um, larger area. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's about right, yeah. I, I don't know if it's good or bad because I, I don't practice them, you know. <laughs> you know that. I just do good them. Point. Well made. <laughs> so well, where are you next? Where are you off to next then, Jen? Now you've done Glasgow again. Have you rebooked it? When does it, when do tickets open for it again? Uh, that probably won't be for quite a while. Probably won't be till next year now, will it, Ian? Not the online Glasgow again. I'm not sure when they did it this year. After I want to say, year. I want to say October is when they probably did it this year. If I'm honest, I I want to say it was towards when Dublin was happening because they they seem to have done this where they are pairing up events. So the Birmingham tickets went on sale when the Manchester event was and the. Manchester tickets went on sale before the Birmingham event, but we do tend to pair them up like that. And last year, the Dublin event was announced when the Glasgow went on sale. Right. Or vice versa on that. So, yeah, it probably won't be until after the summer. Cool. Well, what was what was Glasgow like in itself? Did you get to go out and, and visit Glasgow itself? Yeah, we went around the town centre and things like that, didn't we? And walked a bit down the river. We we did. It was actually interesting, Alan, because this time we stayed in the centre as opposed to staying near the venue, and it made quite a bit of difference, didn't it, Jen? Yeah. In, we in, what, also... in what way? As in, as in, like, you were closer to it? and Yeah, we were closer to amenities, whereas at the actual um, venue, it is a case of... 
there's not too much around it. So unlike in Manchester, where it's right in the city centre, Glasgow, it's a little bit um, out, out of the way. So, yeah, it was nice, like in the evening. On Saturday, we were exhausted, so we just wanted to grab a quick takeaway. So there was takeaways just there. I ended up having a Taco Bell and Jen had a KFC. <laughs> So yummy. <laughs> That's proper nutrition for you, that isn't it? And a, and a bottle of wine. And a bottle of wine. <laughs> oh, you athletes. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. Um, but but no, and we had that. And then on the Saturday we explored Glasgow a, a little bit, we went um, down the shopping district, and as Jen mentioned, we took a stroll down Clyde. Oh, nice one. Well, was, I've never been to to, to like um, Glasgow, so I wouldn't know it. As a, I've been to Edinburgh, but as as a city, is it what's it comparable to in the UK? Uh, Manchester with a Scottish accent. Is it that big? Is Glasgow that big? It feels it to some degree. I, I don't know if it quite has the same outside the main drag, but the main shopping area is comparable. Would you say, Jen? Yeah, I agree. Wow! Wow! And is and High Rocks is right in the centre, like at Manchester. Then, so you, you know, no, as in we like, just said it's outside. Yeah, but I was mean <laughs> no. So you, you I don't mean said in the centre. I mean, I mean, was it like on the outskirts, or was it a good a good distance from it? Mile, give or take. All right, so it's, so it's close. It's close enough. Yeah, it, it's relatively close. It's probably the closest to a, a centre outside of Manchester. Because of course, Excel's a fair distance, as is Birmingham. Yeah, but yeah, we we hopped on a train for I think it was two quid, Jen. Yeah, and it got us there within five minutes. So All right. their their train services are great, aren't they, Jen? Oh yeah, so much better than ours. Yeah, yeah, no, cool. That sounds that sounds perfect. I, I I was asking because I was thinking if I go and if I go, I obviously would want to stop in the centre, but I was thinking. You know, can I walk to it? Can I run to it? You know, that type of distance. But if it's a mile, you know, if, it might be probably a bit more, I think, but on a train in five minutes, wouldn't it? I'm sure a train can probably go faster than... The, the train just gets you the, the quick. And to be fair, I would just take the train. Right, OK. OK. Uh, they're, they're very regular. I think there was one, I want to say every 10 minutes, it might have been even faster. Oh, wow. Well, that's pretty good. Like two quid's not a lot. It's quite reasonable. I'm using my Yorkshire brain here now to work out how much it's going to cost. Can I save money running on catching a train? Yeah. <laughs> Although Jen got a proper bargain. Jen, tell me about your bargain. What? What was that? <laughs> From Built for Athletes. Oh, yeah. I got the new shoulder bags for like 15 quid. And I think it's about 40. It, it said it was £40 there, but they were doing an offer. But then I looked online and they're actually like 60 odd quid. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I love it. It's amazing. So, is it like a gym bag or is it a. It's just a little small, like, bag over your shoulder with like loads of pockets. It's great for me, anyway, without all the stuff I have to carry about. And, and you, you can put your patches on? Yeah, you can put a couple of patches on. I've got the Fitness Racing Podcast one on and an old Circle High Rocks one because it just fit better than the the um, square rectangular thing. Awesome. That sounds perfect. 15 quid, that's a yeah. right bargain. Did you not buy it a lot? Right no, what, so I could then sell them on? Yeah, we could sell them on. We were talking about this earlier. We were saying, buy them and then we'll sell them on. No. Because I'm not like that, because, you know, at the end of the day, like, just, why would you pay more for something you could buy in a shop? I just, I just wouldn't. No. no or a like lot those. more. No. Or a lot more. If it were, like, a few quid more, then fair enough, but, and they were all sold out or whatever. Um, but I think the a, a new thing for them, there was, like, a Red Bull one, which was, like, blue and red, which I bought. And then they had a black one. Right. Whether they do any of the other colours like they've done with the big backpacks, I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna admit I'm I'm not a keen on built for athlete stuff. I I've heard that many stories and falling apart, so I'm not I'm not gonna slate them because I've never had one. 
Um, I do well, like my bug, bulldog rucksack that you get. You yeah. Got me into buying. I didn't want a big one because I have a big backpack like that already and, and hardly use that as it is. So the little bag was quite good because I needed a new little handbag type thing for my stuff. So it's a £15 a fart bargain and I'll have one of them. Thank you. <laughs> so Cool, cool. Um, so are you, are you going to take Ian round again or is he, um, is he now on the sidelines? Oh, he's dumped for London Olympia, aren't you, love? I'm done for London Olympia. Yeah, Jen, what are you doing at London Olympia? I'm doing the women's pro. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so how long have you got until your for your ankle to heal before that, then? I have no idea. But we'll, I'll still get it done. I've done tough mudders in worse state than this. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly have. You certainly have. I think you've got a bit of a while to go. Well over a month, though, haven't you? Yeah. So. I saw my chiropractor on Tuesday, so he's giving me some like extra little exercises to maybe do to try and get it. It just flows up every so often. Just one of them things. It is. It is. Are you wanting to stop on with us for the rest of the show, Jen? Or are you wanting to stay? Because you can join in with us if you want. Well, I could. I'll stay on and listen to you. I don't normally get to do that, do I really? Because I'm that. So are you... <laughs> when I'm chirping, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. You can. You're welcome. Oh, you stop on this. <laughs> Ian, have you got some results for me for high rocks? Because I know you will have the high rocks results already for me. Um, yeah, in the male pro, in third place we had Ollie Russell. In second place we had Liam McCrory, and in first place we had Jake Dearden. Here's something for you, Alan. Second and third place were separated by milliseconds. On the actual results, they both have. 01, 01, 39. So it would have literally been after that 39. Oh, my God. Oh, that's close. Are we going to get to a point where we get we get races this close going going forward? Because the athletes are getting better and better, you know, and as, as athletes get better and better, the, the gap between the top athletes tends to small. Oh, we see it in athletics and things like that. Will we get to a point, do you think, in IROX where we, we see – maybe between the top 10 less than a minute it can happen yeah what's interesting is liam and ollie were actually in different waves so they didn't crash through the finish line together which is a bit of a shame it would have been nice to to see them go head to head i also understand by paul liam mccrory oh beg your pardon um liam um liam mccrory he actually face planted in the rock zone halfway through the race he slipped on some Red Bull. Oh, oh no. Red Bull so Keith, didn't, didn't have wings then. He did. Well, he did. He went flying. <laughs> but, but yeah, so can you imagine if he'd actually come third by like a second or that? How gutting that would have been for him. Yeah, that would have been shocking, wasn't it? But saying that, he, he still didn't get there. You know, the slips cost him. The slip did cost him. Uh, in the women's race, we had Anna Aitken in third place, Geordie Digby in second place, and Patreon, Bryony Keys was in first place with podium in her home country. So well done, Bryony. Awesome. Well done, Bryony. And didn't you have her on the UK HXR podcast this last week? We did. Her and Martin Gemmel, we went through all things Glasgow, the, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Cool. And um, I should really know a lot about Glasgow because I did a bit of editing on that, but I fast edited it because you gave me like less than 24 hours to get it out. Yeah, you you do a really good job when it comes to <laughs> post um, event episodes, to be fair, because the earliest we can usually record with them being two day events now is on the Monday. I've no clue, Alan, what we're going to do for, for London. We We may have to have one in in reserve and then just record that um review episode and release it later on because that's a three day event alan it's saturday sunday monday oh wow wow that's gonna be are you down for all three days as well we are there definitely for the saturday sunday i think we travel back on monday so how much time we spend there is probably train dependent oh cool cool um just while we've been talking about that 
and I want, before we go any further, I just want to get, we've got some breaking news, Ian. Earlier on that we mentioned that there was going to be an event in Scotland, the Fit Body Farm Summit OCR on June 1st. That's currently being postponed with no, no further details of a date at this moment in time. So there's only four on there at the moment in Scotland. Um, Winter McTuff already happened, Titan Warrior 3K, Titan Warrior 8K and Tough Mudder Infinity. So just a quick update on that, Ian, before the podcast ends. I don't want, I don't want no one following me and saying, you got it wrong, Alan. No, we've got it right now. Right now. Perfect. We're not going to edit the earlier, are we? We'll just leave it in. We're going to leave it in, yeah. I'm not going to go back and edit it out. <laughs> oh, dear. What what else is there? Um, so what we've got awards. Can we get an awards update? Can we talk about the awards? Of course we can. It happens in just over a week's time. Um, the schedule is the doors are open from 5 o'clock till 6.30. We're sitting down for a meal at 6.30. Should take up to eight o'clock, we think, for the meal for everyone who's attending. Then we're going to have the awards. There's our awards, the British Ob Sports Awards, the UK OCR Series Awards, and then we're going to have a bit of a disco and a dance and a chat and everything else as as we mingle around Ian with everyone who's attending. Um, big thank you to everyone who's attending. And I was going to say, oh, nuclear races before, and though. So on the Saturday, I'm going down to nuclear races, and uh, on the Sunday, I'm off to um, Body Hub for the Beast race as well. So. I've got to be really careful with the, with the alcohol intake I have on a um, Saturday night at the awards. But I have got a favour to ask Ian. Okay, what favour do you have to ask? Right, so I have been and purchased a massive six foot by six foot backdrop for all the pictures that we're going to have with all the sponsors on, what it is and everything else. And we're going to... Um, I've left a big white spot in the middle, so everyone's going to get to sign you who attends, and we're going to actually raffle it off on the evening, Ian. Not, not for any charge, we're going to give it away to someone on the evening who can keep it um, for no reason we can do that. But there's nowhere to put it, Ian, because <laughs> we're going to, in the place we're going to, there are no walls. And I say the nicest possible tent because it's a huge marquee. So if anyone out there has got a six foot by six foot frame they think we can use and are going anywhere near Essex next Saturday, please contact me because um, we do need to get this up somewhere. We'll gladly give it you back at the end of the night or Sunday morning. Um, yeah, anyone, please help. <laughs> Otherwise, um, I presume Jamie and Rob are just going to be hanging out holding it up. They're not coming. Jamie's, Jamie's um, not well. He can't drive because after his car crash, he can't drive. And um, Rob is away on holiday. So them two are not coming. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to hold it up. You and Mike Nolan. That'll work. But oh, me on wait. one side, you on the other, and then we'll just do a show as well. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Did he request I hate that? I can't remember seeing Rob's request go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't request it. He just, he's just he gone unpaid leave, he says. It's unpaid leave. Oh, okay, unpaid leave. Uh, that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think we've got a last little bit of new. We've got two more bits of new Spartan and Tough Mudder, Ian. So okay. I'm going to let you take the Tough Mudder one because you brought this to our, to my attention. So take it away. Yeah, it's more WTM news, and it is a breaking story as we're recording this. There's two aspects. One, they are going to be having a Tough Mudder event at the world's toughest mudder venue in the morning. So usually WTM is its own thing. This time there's going to be a few ways in the morning to basically go out there and kind of enjoy the WTM course. So that will be on the Saturday morning and then WTM will be starting about 1 p.m. I guess, Alan, it's to bring in a little bit of revenue and also to get a kind of way of justifying building additional obstacles there. Okay, yeah, I get that. I get why they're doing it. It makes sense. I'll be honest with you and say it, it makes sense. I like the whole idea of, you know, while they're there, get people to come and have a little taste of the course. Because don't they open it up for the people to do like a, a bit of a fun lap or something? They do, the hot lap. But at yeah. the moment, there's no option to book the hot lap. That's usually the day before. But at the moment, there's no way of booking that. So I'm not sure whether... They expect pit crew to go and do 
this tough mudder if they want to experience the course? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's definitely a developing story as we speak. Something else which will be quite useful, though, and Giles pointed this out in the community, is with there being an event there, it might pull in some of Tough Mudder's partners. So usually on a weekend, you just kind of had like the merch tent, but you wouldn't have the, the same people selling you the hot dogs or whatever they have in America. They just won't be there. Yep. Whereas if there's going to be, hopefully, several thousand people before the main event, the vendors will turn up. It suddenly becomes worth a while. And hopefully they'll stay around long enough for the WTM participants to use them too. That's an absolutely great, great shout that on Tough Mudder. Yeah, it, it is. And you also have this thing that, in theory, the atmosphere should get good as well. So as you're starting, hopefully you also have a lot of spectators who've hung around from doing the TM. Yeah. How many do WTM, though? Because isn't there quite a lot? Probably about a thousand. Maybe a little bit less than that. But yeah, around that thousand mark is the sweet spot that they're going for. You know what you reminded me of, Alan? Go on. Do you remember this race called Dash of a Titan, which once did a 12-hour OCR, that then put on a 5K halfway through it to reinvigorate it? Yes, I do remember that, which was actually genius. Whoever did that, they did a 5K in the morning and then a 5K halfway through it, um, which was a genius idea by some strange person who had something to do with it. Um, I like it. I think it's going to be quite good what Tough Mudder are doing. It, it, it does sound good. Just one thing, though, the numbers that are going, and so you've got a 1,000 runners. For instance, you've got a 1,000 runners. That's a 1,000 pit stations. That's going to take up a lot of room within an event village for runners to go to. Yeah, that's something we don't know yet. Could it be a case that maybe we have the events village maybe a mile down the track? So they have a different start-stop. Okay, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Because if we think of ETM, where this also happens, in that you have a morning tough mudder, the tent village for ETM does tend to be, what would you say, it's not quite a mile, but it's at least half a mile away. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fair distance. It's close enough to get to get into the event village, but from the... From the Tough Mudder start venue, but last year it was, I would almost say about 400 metres. It felt like 400 metres away from the event village, but then every lap you came back through the event village and that was your new start line after that first hot lap. So, yeah, maybe. That that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll see how we do it. Something that won't be there at the moment is prize money. Oh, shock, gasp, horror. Um, have they used it all at Alula? Well, they didn't pay for Alula. Uh, Alula came from the Saudi government. It was all their money. So you can't you can't really uh, rely on that as an example of, of prize money coming from direct part. But I believe at the moment the winner will get a season pass. So at present, it's actually better to become a Tough Mudder ambassador than and do a really good job than it is to win WTM. How much is it to run at WTM? Do we know? Do you know offhand how much it is? About $500. So, yeah, a season pass is probably around the same. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get into. Um, I think it's a mistake here in that. I think we'd, I've just praised what they were doing there earlier, but I think not having um, prize money at what's supposed to be, isn't this, a, isn't this a World Endurance Championship as well? Isn't this what um, FISA would not or whether they are now uh, a, a claiming it to be the World Endurance Racing Championship. Something like that. It's a World 24-hour championship. But we know um, that FISO already just think you should rely on medals for it anyway. So, that, to be fair, if WTM was to say, no prize money, but we're going to give you a one-of-a-kind trophy for winning, that'd be tempting, do you not reckon? Yeah. That would be super tempting, you know. Um, a bit like, you know, they're doing Formula One, which happened this weekend. They get a huge trophy, don't they, for like for like winning it. But then that's one that goes back every year and has the name written on, but they also get one to keep as well, you know. So 
build two trophies to come like, let's do that, you know, and, and keep track of everyone who's doing it. That would be an amazing idea, something completely unique. It may not attract the big, big names, but it would probably attract the people who would go and do WTM anyway, who are great athletes. So people like the Chris Mendozas, the Austin Azars, that, those kind of kind of names who yeah, they probably can't beat uh, Ray Atkins in a foot race, but they're still good athletes. Yeah. It, it would it would attract the people who want to do it, who are, what's the word I'm looking for, where they want to do something because it's great and not for a, a reason. Diards? But they want to race for the sport of racing. Yes, yeah. And not purely for the, the, the prize money that's at the end of it. Um so, yeah. And speaking of the sport of racing, that brings us on to our probably final topic and Spartan racing. Spartan on Netflix! Thanks to Kelly for fetching this to his attention! I've seen it a while ago on YouTube, um, and it I was a while ago, but it's now on Netflix. Spartan team event on Netflix. It's really cool that it's on Netflix, you can go back and watch. Obviously, it's an old episode, but... If you've never watched it, there's a good chance you don't know what happens because it wasn't really publicised over here. So go and support it if you can because the more views it gets, Alan, the more likely Netflix will then think, you know what, there might be some money in this. Exactly. And and we talk all along about, about views and clicks and things like that. And if our three listeners have listened to this, go and listen to it. That's three more views. And then it means, you know, we might get more OCR. Exactly. And should we talk about the competitive Spartan series as, as well? Because there was some late-breaking news last um, week. Yeah, the, I mean, we've, we've heard this for a while, but it's never like been officially stated that now, and if I get this right, there's only going to be one competitive wave at each Spartan weekend, is how I'm understanding it. Um, so whether it be a sprint, or whether it be a beast, or whether it be a super, there will only be one each weekend that will be the competitive side. I know they talked about this when they released their series for the year, um, but now they're sort of they're making it a little bit more, there's a bit more impact. It's been more on social, hasn't it? Well, it has, and thanks to Steve HFD for that. Yeah, thank you. I love our um, Patreons and our our pub because we're getting more and more news from them as well. It saves us doing, doing all the research, Ian. It really does. Uh, it makes us sound a lot cleverer. So no, you've given away the secret. <laughs> People knew I was never clever. People knew I was clever. One last thing I have got to mention, Ian, because our patrons are going to love this, um, and I think this was thanks to Steve again, but there is a new OCR this year, and I say OCR, it's a 5K OCR, and it has five obstacles on it. However, there's another ch extra challenge you have got to drink five beers while you're going around it. So five OCR obstacles, five beers over five kilometres, um, just in Manchester. It's not far from Manchester Airport. Um, yeah, you can find it on finderace.com. And it's only £39. It's on the 4th of May. It's £39 for a beer runner, £29 for a non-beer runner. There's places left. Get it booked, guys and girls. It sounds like it's going to be mint. Sadly, we're down in London that weekend. It clashes with Higher Ups London Olympia. And sadly, Alan, you're going to be on your jollies. On my jolly hollies. Yeah. So I can't go. So I might do this while I'm over in Turkey. I might just do it randomly and just do my own little thing. We can podcast. <laughs> yeah. You don't even speak Turkish. No, you're quite right. I don't. I know Turkish <laughs> delight. Yeah. I'm not sure if that'll get you very far. <laughs> no. Although speaking of that, and we, we can probably cover this, have you ever noticed how Turkish delight you get in Turkey is so much better than Fry's Turkish delight? Well, it is, but it doesn't it's not covered in chocolate, and I do like mine covered in chocolate. Well, just buy some regular and just throw it in some chocolate. Like a fondue set, yeah, and you could put your Turkish delight onto like a like a little spear and then do, dip it into the chocolate. Hey, I never thought about that. There you go. You can have a chocolate Turkish delight fondue. Ian, we've cracked it. This this could be the new craze. Turkish delight fondue. Should we try and copyright it quickly? Quickly, quickly. Get, get the quickly, quickly. <laughs> In the next five minutes before this goes live. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and that pesky Will Chung uh, copyrights it instead. Yeah, he's, been, he's a patron. He listens to it. He listens to it before we even record it. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, have we got anything left on the notes or? There's nothing from me, and no, I've I've gone through them all. Jenna, have we missed no. anything? I know you're still with us. No, 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 I know. I've 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 not looked at your notes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, on that, I'm going to say it's a goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. Listeners, thank you get once again for listening. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. You take care, you stay safe, you keep on running. And we'll see you at the awards if you're going. Bye. There's some more news I forgot to tell you about. Nuclear Racers have teamed up with us for a competition. Check out our social media and Nuclear Racer's social media because you're going to get a chance to win a goodie bag. What have you got to do? You've got to choose the name of their new obstacle. So go and check it out, boys and girls. And let's hope someone wins.